Welcome to the Be Better broadcast, where we bring you tips and strategies and techniques to help you to live an extraordinary life, both personally and professionally. You know that we love to bring you awesome guests in the areas of personal development and business and content marketing and all those amazing things to help you to share your message so that you can take your unique gifts and skill sets and services and products and bring them to the world and have them to actually be seen. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking to two marketing experts, LinkedIn experts, and small business strategists to help you to do just that, to build your business, to create more. Two guests, you know that we have one small ask when you receive any piece of value from this show. We don't run ads. We don't have sponsors. All that we ask is when you get a piece of value from this show, whether you laugh, whether you're entertained, whether you're educated, anything like that. Simply share this show with one friend who could use that piece of information to share the show with one friend, because today we're going to be talking all about how to grow your business and your personal brand using the power of LinkedIn. And specifically, we're going to be talking to two people. We're going to be speaking to Dina Chalikovich and St Stevan Konchar. And for those who don't know Dina and Stevan, Stevan is a marketing strategist who's grown a startup from six people to a multi-million dollar company. And he's led a sales team that has operated in 110 countries. That is a lot of countries. Not long after he quit his role and met Dina, a direct response copywriter and LinkedIn mentor. Dina was desperately looking for a marketing strategist and they hit it off instantly, spending a year building trust and finally working together. They recently launched their digital product, LinkedIn Hook Templates, with examples that grew Dina's LinkedIn audience from 700 to 8,000 followers and constantly growing. She's at much more than that now in nine months and has generated over 1 million post views and thousands of likes and comments and tons of engagement. Stevan is a father of two, an amateur power lifter, and lives with his wife and kids in Belgrade. Dina lives as a digital nomad traveling the world with her boyfriend, and she is addicted to training, boxing, and dancing. So we're speaking to two very interesting people with a lot of experience this morning. Dina and Stevan, it's a pleasure. Thanks for being on the broadcast. Thank you. This was such an amazing introduction. Thanks for having us. Man. Pleasure is mine. We need to borrow Brandon when we talk to clients. Like we, we could never do it like this, Dina. Whenever you need me. I love that. Whenever you need me, you, you call me up. And I'm curious, both of you, just to have some context here, who do you like to help the most? What clients do you love to work with where you really see the greatest results? Basically, we help both individuals with expertise and company brands who want to build authority online and like... Actually, they want to become the only choice for their target market and escape that commodity world or red ocean world. So uh, we don't have like strict niches like we do B2B marketing or B2C or stuff like that. Uh, as we speak, we work with a trading simulator, real estate agent, and like we have clients in different niches, but basically... We always try to do that human to human marketing and that's pretty much the same everywhere because like whatever you do you need to build relationships with people gain trust build authority and that will grow your sales as well yeah it's so important and i'm really excited to talk to the two of you because i work with a lot of smaller entrepreneurs who want to share their message. They have a story that they want to tell. They've got a group of people that they want to, to help and to serve, kind of like where I was just a few years ago. And a lot of them are missing the boat when it comes to LinkedIn specifically. And I remember early this year, I jumped onto LinkedIn myself. And the beautiful thing about LinkedIn that a lot of people don't know is the organic reach that LinkedIn offers people. I mean, you make a post with your business page on Facebook, and nobody sees it unless you pay money to actually boost that ad. While well, you've got people like Dina out here who shares a post, she'll have two to 300 engagements in a day or two with tons of comments, tons of messages that that spurs. And she didn't pay a dime for that. It's just been built up over the time that you've been building your brand on LinkedIn, Dina. So, so either or Dina or Stevan, I'm curious, what is the power of LinkedIn when it comes to building your brand and why does everybody need to be on LinkedIn or is it only for a specific type of brand or business owner? 
Uh, well, to answer your question, uh, how powerful LinkedIn is, I will just give you one statistic. So currently LinkedIn has almost uh, 800 million users and only 1% of these 800 million users are active on a weekly basis, meaning that they post a couple of times per week, for example. Uh, so that means that 99% of the people uh, on LinkedIn don't use this massive opportunity. So if you are the uh, if you are among the one percent that do it right, imagine uh, what kind of accomplishments uh, results you can have with LinkedIn. So with the right strategy and uh, with being consistent, you can really really make miracles. And uh, Regarding the paid ads that you mentioned, uh, for example, um, they work on Facebook or Instagram or social media like that. But the reason they don't work uh, on LinkedIn is because LinkedIn is a relationship-based based platform. And basically, um, people who sell via LinkedIn mostly have high ticket offers. So, um, you probably won't like if you see some Facebook ad or Instagram ad for trainers. Uh, okay, you will take a risk and pay them. I don't know, hundred bucks, even if they don't suit you. You know, who cares? You you wasted hundred bucks. Never mind. But uh, you certainly won't uh, pay for a coach a couple of thousand dollars, euros or whatever, just based on seeing an ad. You know, so that's what people need to realize and stop wasting money on LinkedIn ads because I totally <laughs> believe they don't work. And uh, LinkedIn is, you know, much more, uh, much more than that. So it's, it's a lot, it's about content and constant relationship building mm. uh, until you move your leads from the stage of being uh, uh, cold leads to the stage of being warm leads and then uh, to hot leads who are ready to buy from you. So that's a, uh, longer process and the um, sales cycle is longer and the nurturing process is longer. So that's exactly why um, just paying for an ad simply won't work. Well said. Well said. I like how you said that LinkedIn is also more for the high ticket offers because when I first started in my own business journey almost three years ago now, I focused solely on the small ticket. And I found that I had to sell 50 copies of my course to make a few thousand dollars. And I was thinking to myself, now I have all these customers that I have to continue to nurture, continue to grow and build, but I'm one person, right? I'm one person with a giant audience that I now have to work with and help and serve. And I can't afford to hire help yet. So I started to think, what's the better route to do things? And a lot of coaches and consultants will find themselves in this same train of thought. I had to focus more on the high ticket because with the high ticket, I could work with one person for $5,000 American money. And I would be able to more deeply help that person without having to work with 50 to 100 different people to make the same exact amount of money. So at the beginning, my recommendation for most coaches and consultants, just to throw some of my own experience in here, is if you're a newer coach, start with the high ticket. Create a signature program. Bring some people through it for maybe even no cost just to get the result for these individuals. And then after you do that, then serve up some high ticket offers. Use LinkedIn specifically to grow this coaching practice for yourself. There's many ways, but LinkedIn is one of the most powerful ways. Dina, I'm curious about your journey. So with an introduction like that, going from 700 followers to over thousands and thousands, over 9,000 followers at this point, under a year's time. So I'm selfishly asking at this point, because I'm curious, because I want to do the same. Tell me the story behind this growth for you. Tell me the story of what the beginning looked like when you finally broke through and started to see results. What's the backstory behind this initial LinkedIn success? Okay, good question. So uh, I'm a nerd. I, I take <laughs> my prep seriously. So uh, before uh, starting to, to post on LinkedIn, I took a LinkedIn course already, I don't know, maybe one and a half year before I started posting on my own profile. And um, so I took that course and uh, took a profile of my business partner at that time who didn't care about LinkedIn. So I took his profile to, uh, to see what works and what doesn't. So to, to apply the principles from that course. And what I found out that from that course that, you know, let's say 40% of these principles do work, uh, but 
at least 50% of principles don't work or maybe it's not the right thing to say they don't work, but I don't find them, um, I don't find them suitable for myself and I'll explain why. So I tweaked those 50% of principles and created my own strategy. And after I created my own strategy and tested it out and everything, then I started with my own profile. So, you know, I was really well prepared. Uh, I don't think honestly that you can go with, uh, that you can have um, these results with no preparation. You know, if you just mm. start and uh, learn by trial and error, I mean, perhaps somebody can, I don't know, but uh, for me, like that prep was key, right? So what I, um, what I didn't like about uh, that course um, was the cold outreach. So it was based on Reaching, reaching out to other people. Um, one thing that is good that many LinkedIn trainers will teach you is that um, don't use automation tool on, tools on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, be authentic. Uh, if you do an outreach, send out personalized invites, uh, check out somebody's profile, take that one minute to check out somebody's profile and then send a personalized invite, like say, honestly say for example oh brandon i like this and this on your profile it resonated well with me you know would you like to connect blah 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 uh that approach can work because people will see that you are more genuine that you're not a robot or that you're not just sending you know uh, templated messages mm. uh, of course it's better than doing that uh but uh, what i always found uh if we, when reaching out to other people is that you are always in an inferior position. So you're never in a position of authority. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, nowadays, especially on LinkedIn, people don't like messages that much because there are a lot of spammers, a lot of cold features, a lot of everything. So people have some kind of a guard, you know, when you, when you reach out to them, I uh, wanted to create a framework where, uh, where you switch those positions so where you are in a position of power and a position of authority so that people reach out to you that uh, jobs uh, chase you opportunities chase you clients chase you whatever you want to accomplish so that you are always the one uh, that's being chased right uh, and how to uh, how to accomplish that that's only through uh, valuable and quality content for your audience mm -hmm. so they say that content is king and uh, I couldn't agree more with that uh, because content is the only thing that can uh, differentiate you from your competitors, that can prove your audience that you are the right solution and the best solution for them. Uh, and that, you know, they need to reach out to you if they want to solve their biggest perceived problems. So, um, and that's exactly what me and Stefan um, me and Stefan today uh, teach our clients uh, is how to uh, position the, themselves in, as, as an authority on LinkedIn and uh, how to be how to be a go-to person in their industry so that other people uh, reach out to them. I love that. Be the go-to in their industry. <laughs> Stefan, I'm curious. Dina talked about preparation and how a lot of preparation went into this beforehand. Coming from the marketing side of things, I find that a lot of new entrepreneurs and business owners, especially because I was in this boat, they'll focus on, oh, I got to build the website. I've got to perfectly optimize my profile. I've got to get all the business cards. I have to get all the branding and the logos and the colors and the fonts. And they never actually end up doing anything because they're so busy with all these things to the left and the right and the shiny object syndrome. From a marketing perspective, what would you recommend when it comes to what types of preparation should small business owners focus on when employing a strategy such as this? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, I see it more and more like uh, even with startup founders, like when you start a startup, all of a sudden you, you see a lot of competitors and I don't know, everybody in the space, they try to kind of uh, do the same thing. And then they spread their focus to too many channels. Like, like you need to have a website you need to do ads on google you need to do ads on facebook you need to uh, build a personal brand on linkedin you need to tweet and uh, then you figure out that you have nothing like you just 
<laughs> you just try to do a bunch of stuff and you you accomplish nothing literally so um i don't know when i when i try to implement marketing strategy for a client i try to keep things simple especially if you're starting out like uh basically i suggest people start out with uh one place to show what they're doing like let's say you have a website or you have a a linkedin profile or just that so for example uh dina got a lot of clients as a copywriter without having her own website her place to show her work was her linkedin profile and that's it mm. uh and then besides that you should start with one channel so don't try to spread your focus everywhere just focus on one channel for some amount of time let let it be like three months or six months and uh, don't expect like things to happen overnight like people are hey i'll write a few posts on linkedin then they get a little bit of engagement or not too much uh, of engagement and then they give up and they're like hey i wrote five posts and nobody's liking my content uh, but the thing is to kind of lower your expectations when you start and try to uh set yourself for success like uh, through consistency because uh, even nowadays like dina's really an influencer on linkedin literally yeah. but uh and we work on her content together but the thing is we never know what's gonna be a viral post we never know like what's gonna get 200 likes what's gonna get 500 what's gonna get 50. Mm. Uh, but the thing we do know is that if we uh, keep uh, being consistent on LinkedIn, we will manage to get like uh, our audience grow. We will manage to get viral posts. We will manage to get clients reach out to us and all that. So basically, instead of trying to be everywhere and uh, overcomplicate things, try to focus on one place where you'll sell your services or products, one channel that you'll master through consistency and that's it that's it for a start nothing nothing much more so power you know it it it's you said such a you said what you said so simply yet it really is such a deep topic to talk about because i asked you about preparation and you gave me some physical things that people can do like choose one channel have one place to show your work which is really powerful but you also dove into the mindset portion which is really the arena that I talk with most of my clients about, which is you got to set the expectation low, right? The, the point is to get started, to put out content, not just for the vanity metrics, but to truly impact the person that you're looking to reach across the screen, whoever's watching you on their screen. You have to get started. I, I've met so many people who they make one post or they do two posts or three posts, five posts, and they're, they're a week apart, two weeks apart, and they're like, this just isn't working for, for me. I'm not sure where this organic reach is coming from. I'm not, I'm not sure why it's working for Dina and Stevan, but it's not working for me. And it's like, dude, you got to do this for like more than five posts. You have to do this for more than a month, two months, three months, five months. Dina, you didn't say, oh, in a week, I went from this to this. You said in under a year, I went from this to this. A lot can happen in a year, right? But not a lot will happen in a month two months, three months, four months. It's only when you look back, you're able to connect the dots and say, wow, all these efforts yielded this giant result for me. That's powerful. I like how you touched on the mindset there. Dina, I'm curious. I believe when, when I work with people, especially performers, and when I work with people who corporate athletes, I always focus on what's the, what's the 10 to 20% of things that I can focus on that will help this person to get 80% or more of the results. So when you had all these different strategies and principles, like you mentioned the 50% that didn't work, that you had to tweak, what are the smallest things that you tweaked that got you the greatest result that somebody listening could use in their own LinkedIn strategy? Good question. So first, I would say uh, put a heavy focus on uh, your content and uh, continue marketing yourself always, meaning continue to write your content consistently, because what many, many people do is they write, uh, write the content, then they uh, manage to get like one or two, three 
affluent clients and they cannot take on uh, more clients at the moment so they just stop you know marketing themselves meaning stop writing content uh, and then again when you know those projects are finished then they are panicking uh, what you really need to do is to write consistently your content and that needs to be your top priority. So regardless of other things, regardless of all the client work or whatever it is, you have to keep reminding yourself that that's actually how you sell and that's actually uh, where your clients come from. So that you, yeah, you need to put your content uh, on the first place. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing is, uh, I would say that if you apply uh, this one principle to everything you do on LinkedIn, you will have a massive uh, success, meaning that if you apply quality to everything that you do, you will have a massive success. For example, uh, as you said, writing quality posts, it's better to write two posts per week and make them really valuable uh, for a target market, then post every single day, you know, just to tick the box and said, oh, I posted today. Mm. Um, so you will never be able to uh, position yourself as an authority uh, if you won't have valuable posts that help your target audience. Then, for example, when you comment on other people's posts, which is also very important, engage on other people's posts, uh, that it's better to, uh, for example, comment on a handful of posts with a longer meaningful comment that will stand out. Uh, that's way better than, you know, um, comment on 20 posts that day, just saying, oh, great post, awesome, thanks for sharing, and all of these things that people usually write. Mm. Uh, you will never be able to stand out that way. You know, only when you start to write really uh, meaningful comments, you engage uh, with other people, you engage with the, uh, with the, both the owner of the post and their audience. So that's how I met a lot of people um, uh, online on LinkedIn who were later my clients, colleagues, whatever. You, for example, engage with them uh, in the comments, then you continue the conversation uh, via messages and so on. Uh, so that's very powerful, uh, especially if you apply uh, one tip that uh, that I shared with my share a lot with my target audience and tell them to do that. Uh, even though this is the only uh, tip that actually I don't follow that much, but I used to do that in the beginning when I was growing my following. It's a great tip. So like find um, let's say five influencers in your industry and find out when they post. So influencers mostly post on the same days at the same times. Mm -hmm. uh, find out when they post and be among, uh, either be the first person or among, uh, among the first couple of people who comment on their posts and write that long, valuable comment. Wow. Um, that's, for example, what my uh, dear friend, uh, Larry Cabrera, I don't know if you know him on LinkedIn. He's, uh, he's an influencer on LinkedIn and he's an awesome human being. Uh, that's how he uh, grew his network very fast, uh, faster than me. Uh, so he continued to writing those valuable comments and he would get, I don't know, he writes a comment on Gary Vee's post, for example, and he gets 300 likes just on that comment. Mm. So from these 300 likes, of course, he then connects to all of the people who, who liked his comment. And that's how he builds his uh, following, his relationships with people and everything else, because then uh, that connection is warm. It's not cold anymore. Like, you know, you just uh, send an invite to connect to a random person, but it's different when that, that person already saw you somewhere, you know, it's, it's a warm connection. So that's another thing. Um, also when sending uh, invites to connect, if you send invites to connect, always do as I said, like spend that one extra minute and really connect with somebody who resonated well with you, not just to send, you know, bunch of uh, invites and uh, think that, you know, that's the best way. So basically everything that you do, do that extra step uh, where you will invest uh, either more of your time or uh, whatever it needs to provide that quality. And as I said, if you have a limited time, for example, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes per day, rather comment three posts with great, with big comments, than you know, comment on 20 with, with uh, like awesome post uh, type of comments. 
So if you apply that principle and always uh, focus on giving out value, educating people and help them, helping them solve their problems, um, you, will, you will really have a success on LinkedIn, uh, especially after some time, if you're consistent, like there is no way that you have no success. I love the way your brain works <laughs> because yeah. you just took that question and immediately like I see the little check mark emojis with boom, <laughs> bomb piece of content, boom, bomb piece of content, like one after the other, because we could make an episode on each of those things. And I'm going to use that specific one of find the top influencers in your industry find when they post specifically, be one of the first people to be in there leaving a high quality comment, not just great post. Thanks for posting, Larry. It's like everyone's doing that. But what if you have something that adds to the conversation, I think is really important that you said, not just leaving your opinion, but something that takes what was said, adding a different twist on it, adding a different perspective, adding more value to what's already existing there. That the way that you answer that question alone just shows exactly why you grew in the time that you were able to grow in. I'm curious, and I want to ask you this question, Dina. When you were growing, I there must have been a part of your mind that was like, I want to increase this number on my profile. Were you focused on your number of followers and connections? Or were you mainly focused on the quality of the content you were posting? And as you think about that. I think about me and I think I'm new to this platform. I want to have that social proof. I want to have that authority. I have like 700 followers right now. And I know that people might see the content I post and they say, wow, that's really good. I wonder why he's only a 700 followers. There must be a reason for that. Right. And usually people's mind doesn't just go to, oh, he's brand new at LinkedIn. For someone like me, would you recommend that I send more connections to people or would you recommend just focusing on creating great content and letting people find and follow me? No, I would just say focus, focus strongly on your content. So to answer your question, um, I'm obsessed with my content and I never like, I don't know, Stefan sometimes tells me, Oh, you gained, uh, I don't know, a thousand more followers. I didn't even know. Uh, so I'm really, really fo hyper focused on my content, and I think that will always deliver the best results. And especially, uh, especially what's important. That's why I said uh, like don't use automation tools and stuff like that. Is the quality of these connections. Mm. Uh, so now you, you you reminded me as well about the the previous course that I took uh, before I started with my own LinkedIn and what I tweaked. Uh, for example, the coach in that course uh, taught us to uh, only connect with people who are ideal clients and uh, to only connect, um, you know, with people who, who we can sell uh, our, our products or services, whatever our offer is. And the reason behind it is because at the beginning, uh, I mean, yes, at the beginning, so LinkedIn only, uh, LinkedIn algorithm is terrible. So it means that uh, it only shows uh, your posts to the to one percent of people among your followers and then if these one percent don't engage uh the algorithm will just stop showing the post right mm -hmm. so um their um, um their argument why to uh, only connect to your ideal clients is you want that you know those one percent people definitely are your ideal clients you don't want that that post is shown to somebody, I don't know, who will never buy your product or service, you want that the right people see it, right? Mm. But thank God I abandoned that approach. Uh, because for example, if I did take that approach, I would never ever met Stevan, I would never work with him. Uh, what I found out later is that when you really build genuine relationships, and uh, when sales is not the first thing that's on your mind, but you really build uh, genuine relationships, then you meet so many people who are ready to help you. Like, for example, um, I don't know, I met copywriters uh, who are my competitors, but I met great copywriters who send me a bunch of materials. I send them, we help each other. Uh, when they have a client they, uh, they don't like to work with because it's not their niche or something, they send them to me, I do the same for them. You know, uh, I don't know, I connected with many people who will never buy my service because they don't need it. But because we built a relationship, 
they sent me other links because they talk people oh Dina talk to people Dina is amazing blah 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 and their connections reach out to me telling me oh this guy told me that you know you're a great copywriter so my point is like don't just um, look at who you are going to sell 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 but uh, you know really have the goal to to meet amazing people and you will because many people on that platform help me out more than I don't I, like I feel with many people that we are such a good friends like Larry I mentioned him he's already one of one of my best friends uh, and I've never I, uh, I've never seen him so he lives in the states <laughs> But he helped me out a lot on my journey. Uh, I helped him out. So, you know, these are the things that are invaluable. So I would say that's the main approach with LinkedIn. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's really powerful because the only reason that we're having this conversation, the only reason even why I met Stevan is because I met Simon and I had a conversation with Simon because he joined one of our live events that we did and it was like 1 a.m his time and he's like i'm here because i want to meet people and i want this knowledge and i'm like this guy is crazy like it's 1 a.m and he's what are you doing here like go to bed but i'm really happy he did because he reached out to me after and that is just someone who is so laser focused on meeting people building connections building relationships and being a resource to people because He's the one who introduced me to you, Dina. And I saw yourself for a while after meeting Simon, but finally he said, you need to meet Dina. And for yeah, meeting yeah. you, I met Stevan. And, and it's the only reason yeah. we're having this conversation. So it's so interesting that you never truly know who you're going to meet. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. One thing that I think is important to touch on, and then I have a question for you, Stevan, is creativity. And I'm sure you both work on this together. But sometimes a post from you, Dina, is like a post you made recently where I wish I could share my screen, but it would boot, it would bump everyone to the right and I'm not going to do it. But you made a post recently where you took a screenshot of a previous post and <laughs> you wrote over the previous post showing why the post worked and the formula for it. And I was like, I screenshot all your posts and I use them. So I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. Like you've got the social proof, you've got the authority, you have this line, this line, the purpose of this, the purpose of that. And every, when we talk about quality content, cause I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, and I'm going to ask you this too, Stefan, when you talk about quality content, every line matters. And you talk a lot about don't fluff it up, like post it or, or type it, look at it. And you're probably removing like 70% of what was originally there. Maybe not at this point because you're more skilled, but every line has a purpose. Every line has its own unique substance. So Stevan, when you're working with Dina and we both working together to create this quality content, what truly goes into quality content in itself? <laughs> That's a great question and so hard to answer uh, in, a sh in a short amount of time. So basically, we, we could talk for, for a while, but I'll try. I'll do my best. So um, basically, the way uh, why Dina has so awesome content and why people in general, like you, you can see, I don't know, Justin Welsh, uh, Austin Belsack, and people who are really uh, successful on LinkedIn, uh, there is a cre creativity part, but they all have some kind of framework. Uh, and you keep like, you, you try to, you try posting, then you build some kind of framework and you keep upgrading it until it's super successful and it's working. So uh, that's something we do. Like the thing with creativity, uh, you cannot schedule it. You cannot like say, okay, it's, it's noon, I'm going to be creative right now. I'm going to write something perfect and stuff like that. Uh, but we do have our way of like capturing ideas and then, I don't know, consuming other people's content, uh, like figuring out how to make a flow out of the post, uh, finding posts in different niches and then uh, make them work for our niche and, and stuff like that. So uh, we, we have a content framework for LinkedIn posts we keep upgrading it and that's how we keep our creativity so to say like uh at, at a high level so uh it's not so simple like hey i'm gonna be creative right now or like sometimes 
you get the best ideas when you go for a walk or like uh, you're at the gym doing something and I'm, I'm like oh this would be a great post so uh but yeah you can you can kind of make a framework uh that will work for you and that will make you uh produce con uh, consistently a quality content and like grow over time so to say so hope hope i covered it uh you did as well you as did. i could yeah <laughs> and i think it's important for everyone to literally rewind two minutes to re-listen to that several times because in that short amount of time you said a lot of things that are really powerful like looking in different niches and seeing what's working there and using that for your own like i i said that i'm screenshotting dina's post guys but i'm not a copywriter like i that i i that's one thing that I do, but I don't do that as a service for other people, right? I'm not an expert copywriter, but I'll use similar frameworks. I'll take her framework and I'll make it work for my audience, people who want to improve their life, people who want to perform at their peak. As an example, even when you're optimizing your LinkedIn page, like I had to redo my about me because I wanted a stronger about me because that's one of the things people are looking at when they go to your profile. I went to Dina's page and I looked at a lot of people's about me's and I was like, I love Dina's because it's just her skill in copywriting on display for everyone to see. So I looked at it and I modeled it and I used it for my own page and we're in completely different niches. If you go look at it now, it, it looks very different because I applied it to me, but use what works, right? Success leaves clues. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't try to immediately invent your own framework. Find one that is working for somebody. Take it, even copy it, paste it into the thing and add in your value and your information and your message and see what works. And slowly but surely you begin to become more of yourself the more that you do it. But remember, success leaves clues. So just simply follow those clues. Oh man, this is such an episode. I freaking love it. <laughs> and that's a great wrap up, Brandon. Good for you. Like uh, you're wrapping it up really well. Like uh, even better than what Dina and I say. You just pack it up all together, and it sounds amazing. So <laughs> keep up. Yeah, you're, you're, you're keen to promote us. <laughs> Definitely. And speaking of that, I want to talk about your product. I want to talk about the LinkedIn hook templates because, guys. I think this is important to say. I have a lot of people on the show, all amazing people, experts in different fields. They have their products. We talk about the product at the end. I hardly ever personally use many of their products because I talk to many people, right? Mm -hmm. Dina and Stevan's product, I use every single LinkedIn post that I make. I use these LinkedIn hook templates for every single post. And rather than me talking about it, I, I will. I will talk more, but I, I want to hear from both of you maybe even starting with you, Dina, tell us about the LinkedIn hook templates, why you created it and who it's really for and why people should be using it. Well, first of all, this is such a great compliment. That's, that is one of the products that you actually use. So thank you for that. Um, so LinkedIn hook templates, it's for um, anyone who posts on LinkedIn. So earlier when you asked um, how to write uh, valuable posts, there are some uh, key, uh, key points in a post that uh, every person should follow, no matter the industry or whatever. So, for example, one of the things is that um, you need to make your post eye appealing. So you don't write a bunch of text, but uh, you write one sentence, then hit space, then write another sentence and so on. So that uh, your post is, not, is uh, eye appealing because uh, when you when you see a bunch of text on one place, it's it's automatically like eye repelling, so you will give up on reading. So, for example, that's one thing. Uh, the post, uh, uh, the most important part of the post is the first sentence. It's called the hook sentence. Uh, it's actually not just one sentence, but it's that part of the post uh, that people see before clicking on see more or read more. Not sure. So your goal with that hook is to impel the reader to click on see more and keep on reading. So as you know, uh, thousands of posts uh, are posted daily on LinkedIn and people just scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, and your job is to stop the scroll with that hook sentence and grab the attention immediately. 
So we wrote uh, 55 uh, hook templates with examples for various industries. Uh, so it's basically a copy paste uh, template that you can just uh, copy, uh, fill in something that's, that's relatable to your target audience and paste it for your post. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is our first product and uh, our next product is uh, coming soon. It's going to be a LinkedIn Authority course. Oh. So... <laughs> oh man, I'm so freaking excited for that. Yeah, yeah. So that's another one. Uh, maybe in between we will also uh, launch some short digital products like these uh, hook templates or some valuable uh, ebooks or whatever. But let, let's say this is a, this is a bigger one when where we explain in detail everything how to do it. Uh, Stevan always tells me like we're in the process now of filming it and everything. Stevan keeps telling me, uh, they know you need to make it shorter. Like this will last forever because you know uh, we are trying to fight between we want to give more, more, more value, and between you know uh, know what's important and what what's not so important. <laughs> So we still need to figure out, you know, how it will look like in the end. Uh, but uh, yes, I think it's going to be out in like two or three months or so. I love that. And I think it's important to say too that, you know, you just mentioned it's it's longer and Stefan's like, oh, well, you know, we need to make this shorter. What I love about the LinkedIn hook templates specifically and why I love using it is because it's so well put together. It's a lot of information. It's many, many pages. However, there's a table of contents that have hyperlinks to them. So mm -hmm. I literally go to the table of contents where it shows the summary. And once I find one that looks good out of the 50 different examples, I haven't even gone through them all. I probably used about 20 at this point. You click the hyperlink and it sends you right to the point in the document that shows the hook. It shows three specific examples with different niches of how you can actually use this hook for your content. And this is the thing, like, guys, when you're posting, you could be posting, like, the cure for happiness. Like, this this mm -hmm. one post could be everything that you need in your life to be completely fulfilled and happy and everything. And you put it out there, and you're like, there, I just solved a giant problem. But the thing is, and the problem in itself is people are just going to scroll by it. If it doesn't have that appealing sentence right at the beginning, they're minds are so inundated with the whole TikTok culture of swipe, 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 that they're just subconsciously scrolling through their LinkedIn. You have to give them a reason to stop, to look at this mind shocking fact, or to look at these different reasons why what they're doing isn't working for them, or something to get them to stop and click more. And the point is your content can be bomb. It can be incredible. But if that first hook in line isn't hooking people in and getting them to click see more. And if that post isn't eye appealing and if it doesn't look like eye candy, then your content can be great, but no one's going to read it. And that's where the magic of the, these LinkedIn hook templates come in. And it's so inexpensive. Guys, I'm going to put a link to the LinkedIn hook templates in the description so you can check it out. You can also find it when you go to Dina's LinkedIn page, go to her featured and there's a link right to the templates right there so you can check it out and join their ecosystem so that you can see all of her future content and all of Stefan's future content moving forward. Because guys, the content alone is so valuable. It's, it's as valuable as the templates. But I like the templates because I always have it open in my PDF Acrobat. It's always open. So when I'm about to write a post, I don't even like know. I have an idea of what I want to write, but I click it. And then I just look through and I'm like, how can I start this in a fun way? And I think a big problem with a lot of people is they have the problem of just starting the post. They don't know how to start it. They're looking at a blank computer screen like, what can I say to get people's attention? Take the guesswork out of it. Use these 50 real life examples that have had proven success and that have a track record instead. I love it. Thank you have so much. <laughs> yeah my pleasure like i said foundation i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> i speak truly from the heart with it because i actually I use it see that. <laughs> That's and, so powerful. And, and links are in the description guys but dina and stefan i'm going to ask both of you individually because i'm really curious to know at this chapter in your life and your business right now we'll start with you dina what is the positive impact that you are looking to make on the world at this chapter in your life 
Wow, that's an awesome question. Uh, well, first of all, my rule is that I only work with ethical businesses. So, for example, I will never write, I don't know, for McDonald's. I'm a healthy eater and uh, I wouldn't like to write for a company that poisons people. Mm. You know, uh, and that's like working with ethical clients and uh, we even uh, give 20% 20 of discount to uh, businesses that link profit with purpose. Mm. So I see, you know, that's that's one part how how we can help out. Uh, and we truly, we're truly trying to uh, either via podcasts, uh, our content that's available to everybody. We're truly trying to help uh, everyone, educate everyone, um, whoever jumps on a call with us, um, uh, like prospects who, who are not even decided to work with us yet. We always give them tons of advice that many people uh, charge. We already help like for free. So that's the thing, uh, how, you know, how I see that we continue working. And the more companies, or the way I see it is this, the more ethical companies I can help, uh, if I can help, help them s sell more, that means these companies are going to be more successful. They are going to help even more people. They are going to hire more, more people. So it's simply how the good uh, spreads everywhere. That's how I see it. I love that you're helping other impactors to impact more people. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> Stevan, how about for you, brother? What's the positive hey, impact you want to make? Yeah, uh, I tried to answer that question like uh, some time ago. And the thing I realized about myself is what I'm really passionate about is like helping entrepreneurial leaders. So uh, basically, that's something I've been doing for like five or six years. Uh, for example, when I was leading a sales team, uh, I, I had to hire people, onboard people, train people, uh, and everything along these lines. But the thing is, I always try to make them uh, think outside the box and see, see the world from a different perspective. And uh, I'm proud to say that out of the people, like I hired around 10 people in total, and like three of them uh, became managers after less than two years of working together with me. Uh, that's something we've been trying to do with uh, all our clients, with uh, startups, with uh, people who want to just like uh, get out of that commodity trap and like uh, get out of the red ocean and uh, individuals with expertise who want to become LinkedIn authorities. So, um, yeah, probably just one line that describes what I'm really passionate about is like inspire entrepreneurial leaders. That's I'll, I'll just stop there. So, yeah. <laughs> I love it. You, you and I, we have that shared interest in mind for sure, because it, it makes a big difference when you're able to help other people to share their message and to reach more people. And, and really, if you're helping a thousand leaders to reach, I mean, think about it. You're working with thousands of leaders who are then reaching thousands of people on their own. So it's exponential impact in a sense. It's beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Dina and Stevan, it was it's an absolute pleasure talking with you. It's a pleasure knowing you. I love seeing how you're continuing to impact people. And uh, I'm just really grateful for this opportunity to bring you on the show and talk about what's worked and, and what you're planning to do in the future. So thank you both very much. Thank you so much, thank Brandon. You, Brandon. <laughs> talk to you guys Have a great rest of the day. Wow. That was an in-depth and full of rich content discussion with Dina Chalikovich and Stevan Konchar. Again, I'm going to include links to their LinkedIn. I'm going to include links to the LinkedIn hook template in the description so that you can check those out and so that you can follow their content because their content alone is so rich. You need to be a part of their ecosystem. Again, if you found even one piece of value out of probably 80 to 100 pieces of value that were in this discussion and conversation, simply share this show with one friend who could use it. That's the price of entry. That is all we ask here at the Be Better Broadcast. As always, thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And until we talk again next time, continue to be better.